Our first step to solving this question is to list the given information. We have a sanding disk whose rotational inertia is given by this quantity here. Rotational inertia is symbolized by uppercase I. So we'll go ahead and list that information first. And then we read on and we learn that this disk is attached to an electric drill whose motor delivers a torque of magnitude 16 newton meters. We can symbolize torque by tau and that is equal to 16 newton meters. About the axis and with the torque applied for 33 milliseconds, that's a time value. We must make sure we convert that into seconds by multiplying it by 10 to the negative 3. And the first part of the question asks us for the magnitude of the angular momentum. So in part A, we're looking to calculate uppercase L. And then in part B, we are asked to calculate the angular velocity, which is symbolized by omega. And it turns out that we're going to be able to solve part B first, and then go back and solve part A. Now to do that, we understand that the relationship between torque and rotational inertia is given by the following equation. This is very much analogous to saying that F is equal to mass times acceleration. The only difference here is this is rotational motion, so we use a rotational counterpart. And to solve for the angular acceleration, which is given by alpha, we would divide both sides of this equation by the rotational inertia, which cancels out on the right-hand side. So we have the torque divided by the rotational inertia. That's going to give us the angular acceleration. Let's go ahead and plug in the known values that we listed earlier. And then after computing that, we end up with an angular acceleration of about 13,333.3 repeating. This is angular acceleration, so rather than saying meters per second squared, we will say radians per second squared. So this is our angular acceleration. And now we can use that to calculate the angular velocity, which is the question in part B. We recall from rotational kinematics that the final angular velocity is equal to the initial angular velocity plus the angular acceleration multiplied by the time. Now, regarding the initial angular velocity, if we go back and read the question carefully, we can see that the disk was never stated to have any initial angular velocity. So we can assume that it starts from rest, and therefore the initial angular velocity is going to be zero. So the equation reduces to the following. And since the time was given, we can plug in the known values. And there are the values plugged in. And when we calculate the final angular velocity, we will get 440. And then the units turn out to be radians per second. So this was the answer to part B of the question. Now that we have that value, we can head back to part A and very easily calculate the angular momentum because the angular momentum is equal to the rotational inertia multiplied by that angular velocity. That is analogous to saying that the linear momentum of an object is equal to its mass times velocity. Probably learned that in an earlier chapter. Let's go ahead and plug in the values given and calculated for I and omega. And so once we compute the angular momentum, we obtain a value of about 0.528 and then dimensionally, we're multiplying kilogram meters squared by radians per second. When you multiply by radians per second, the radians essentially cancel. So you're left with a unit of kilogram meters squared per second. So this would be the correct answer for the angular momentum in part A. One more point regarding part B. If your homework system needs you to calculate the angular velocity in revolutions per minute, then you can make a simple conversion. So we're going to rewrite the answer as 440 radians per one second. And then to get this into revolutions per minute, we know, of course, that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. And so when we end up multiplying by that conversion factor, the seconds will cancel out. But then we also have to convert the radians into revolutions. And of course, it turns out that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. And when we multiply by that conversion factor, the radians will cancel out. This does leave us with revolutions per minute. And this works out to be approximately 4.2 times 10 to the power of 3, or simply 4200. And the unit here, as mentioned, would be revolutions per minute.